Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer. Today is Tuesday the 26th of May 2020. We are in that period between Ascension Day and the Day of Pentecost. We celebrate the feast today of St. Augustine of Canterbury, the first Archbishop who died in 605. There are also two commemorations. We commemorate John Calvin, the great reformer who died in 1564, and Philip Neary, who was founder of the Oratorians and was a well-known spiritual guide who died in 1595. I'm going to read an extract from Exciting Holiness uh, regarding St. Augustine of Canterbury. And we read that Augustine was the prior of the monastery of St. Andrew in Rome. In 596, at the instigation of Pope Gregory the Great, he was dispatched as the leader of a group of 40 monks to re-evangelize the English church. Augustine appears not to have been particularly, a particularly confident person, and in Gaul he wanted to turn back. But Pope Gregory's firm resolution held the group to their mission. The monks finally landed in Kent in the summer of 597, where they were well received by King Ethelbert, whose wife Bertha was a Christian. Once established, Augustine returned temporarily to Gaul to receive ordination as a bishop. Pope Gregory would have preferred London to have become the primatial see, but in the event Canterbury was chosen, and thus Augustine became the first Archbishop of Canterbury. He died in either 604 or 605. Let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory for ever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us this day, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with faithful love and compassion, who satisfies you with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom has dominion over all. Blessed the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 98. The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvellous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His deliverance has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. 
he has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sound praises to the Lord all the earth. Break into singing and make music. Make music to the Lord with the lyre. With the lyre and the voice of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sound praises before the Lord the King. Let the earth see thunder and all that fills it. The world and that and all that dwell upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands. And let the hills ring out together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. The Lord has made known his salvation. Lord God, just and true, you make your salvation known in the sight of the nations. Tune the song of our hearts to the music of creation as you come among us to judge the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Psalm 99. The Lord is king, let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion and high above all peoples. Let them praise your name, which is great and awesome. The Lord our God is holy. Mighty King who loves justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God. Bow down before his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests. And Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of the cloud. They kept his testimonies and the law that he gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God. You were a God who forgave them and pardoned them for their offences. Exalt the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill. For the Lord our God is holy. Lord God, mighty King, you love justice and establish equity. May we love justice more than gain and mercy more than power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Psalm 100. The Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting. O be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. The Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting. O Christ, door of the sheepfold, may we enter your gate with praise and go from your courts to serve you, in the poor, the lost and the wandering, in this day and all our days. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 22, reading from verse 36 to chapter 23, verse 12. When Balak heard that Balaam had come, he went out to meet him at Ir Boab, on the boundary formed by the Arnon, at the farthest point of the boundary. Balak said to Balaam, Did I not send to summon you? Why did you not come to me? Sorry, I Am I not know. able to honour you? you? Balaam said to Balak, I have come to you child? now, but do I have power to say just anything? Here are the next Alexa, stop. The word God puts, puts in my mouth. That is what I must say. Then Balaam went to Balak, and they came to Kiriath Huzoth. Balak sacrificed oxen and sheep, and sent them to Balaam, and to the officials who were with him. On the next day, Balak took Balaam and brought him up to Bamoth Baal, 
and from there he could see part of the people of Israel. Then Balaam said to Balak, Build me seven altars here, and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for me. Balak did as Balaam had said, and Balak and Balaam offered a bull and ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, Stay here beside your burnt offerings while I go aside. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me. Whatever he shows me, I will tell you. And he went to a bare height. Then God met Balaam, and Balaam said to him, I have arranged the seven altars, and have offered a bull and ram on each altar. The Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak, this is what you must say. So he returned to Balak, who was standing beside his burnt offerings with all the officials of Moab. Then Balaam uttered his oracle, saying, Balak has brought me from Aram, the king of Moab, from the eastern mountains. Come, curse Jacob for me. Come, denounce Israel. How can I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I denounce those whom the Lord has not denounced? For from the top of the crags I see him, from the hills I behold him. Here is a people living alone and not reckoning itself among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob or number the dust cloud of Israel? Let me die the death of the upright and let my end be like his. Then Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I have brought you to curse my enemies, but now you have done nothing but bless them. He answered, Must I not care, take care to say what the Lord puts in my mouth? This is the end of the first reading, the Song of Ezekiel. The Spirit of God fills the whole world. Alleluia. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleannesses. A new heart I will give you and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The Gospel, the, the, the next reading, the second reading is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 8 reading from verse 1 to verse 15. Soon afterwards he went on through the cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod Stuart Chusa, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. When a great crowd gathered and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell on the path and was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on rock, and as it grew up, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some fell into good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. And as he said this, he called out, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. Then his disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to others I speak in parables, so that looking they may not perceive, and listening they may not understand. Now the parable is this, The seed is the word of God, the ones on the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. The ones on the rock are those, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root and believe only for a while, and in a time of testing fall away. As for what fell among the thorns, these are the ones who hear, but as they go on their way they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. But as for that in good soil... These are the ones who, when they hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patient endurance. Here ends the second reading. 
the responsory. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people and kindle in us the fire of your love. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people. Renew the face of your creation, Lord, pouring on us the gifts of your Spirit, and kindle in us the fire of your love. For the creation waits with eager longing for the glorious liberty of the children of God. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your people, and kindle in us the fire of your love. The Gospel Canticle, the Song of Christ's Glory. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in our human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. We offer up our prayers of intercession, and we pray today for the day and its tasks. We pray, Lord, again, that you would help us to introduce a little bit of system and order into our lives. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to find fulfillment in what we do in the small tasks and the large. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the world and its needs. We pray, Lord, For our government, which at the moment seems to be beset by a scandal concerning the operations of the Prime Minister's Chief Special Advisor, we pray, Lord, that this would not be a distraction to the onerous and great task set before it, namely how we respond to the crisis and enter into that tension between the importance of honouring and preserving life and creating our way of life as a society. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the church and her life. We pray in particular, Lord, for the future of the Church of England. In the light of the news that the Archbishop of York, the new Archbishop of York, Stephen Cotterell, will undertake a wide-ranging view which may lead to radical changes in the way that ministry is 
configured and ordered in the church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, Lord, for those who suffer in body, mind and spirit, for those who are bereaved, whether recently or in memory of those who've died in the past. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, whose servant Augustine was sent as the apostle of the English people, grant that as he laboured in the spirit to preach Christ's gospel in this land, so all who hear the good news may strive to make your truth known to the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.